In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the PMT or payment function in the NumPy financial module. So NumPy financial is a carve out from NumPy and essentially contains a handful of financial functions similar to spreadsheet functions that you may be familiar with in Excel. So you may have to install this. It doesn't come as part of Anaconda or any other install. So if you need to do that, you can run this line of code right in the notebook, or you can just run pip install from the command line. All right, once you get it installed, we'll go ahead and import it. Okay, and then if we want, we can just take a look at what functions are included. Okay, so as mentioned, a lot of the common functions that you may be familiar with from Excel, so future value, interest payment, IRR, and so forth. And as I mentioned, we are going to be looking at the payment function, and we can use this to calculate the amount of a loan payment. All right, so that could be used for a house loan, a car loan, all right, or any other common loans that are out there. Okay, there are good help files on these, so you don't necessarily have to remember exactly how to use these. You can just call help. And most of them give an example down at the bottom of what running the function in Python looks like. Okay, so I just kind of made up an example here and uh, we're gonna be borrowing 360,000 at 5.875 and uh, we're gonna pay it back in 30 years. So a typical mortgage loan type scenario. All right, so maybe we want to look at things like, well, of course, how much is the monthly payment? And then, okay, what happens if the interest rate isn't what we expected here? Okay, so we'll assign a few variables there, and then we'll just call the basic usage here, payment. All right, and uh, it wants a rate. And the rates expressed here is a whole number, so I'm going to have to convert that to a percentage. And on top of that, it's an annualized rate and you pay these loans typically monthly. All right, so I'm going to adjust the rate to reflect how often I make the payment. All right, so if I divide by 1,200, I'll get 1 12th of this rate expressed as a percentage. All right, so the term, again, it's expressed in years. We're going to convert it to the periodicity of our loan payment. And then the last argument that we need that's required anyway is the loan amount and most of these financial functions will return a negative value unless you make something negative and convention is that you make the present value negative now i could just put a negative sign in front of the whole thing and return the negative value of the calculation all right but i'm just going to follow convention all right and if you notice from the help there were two other arguments they are optional all right one is the future value and unless we put something in it's assumed that that future value is zero so we pay the entire loan back all right and the last argument is a type and it tells us when the interest starts accruing okay so for most loans it starts accruing immediately all right for some instruments it may start accruing at the end of the first period all right but that's a pretty rare occurrence Okay, so let's see what this gets us. All right, so there's our number, all right, and there's a lot of precision out there, all right? So essentially uh, $2,130. If we want, we can reformat that. Okay, so I'll turn it into an F string, and then I will give it a comma separated two point floating number format, and I'll, I'll even put the dollar sign in front of it. So there's our formatted output. All right, so the second question I asked is, well, what happens if we want to see the sensitivity of this payment to changes in the interest rate? All right, so maybe we're quoted 5.875, but if we pay a little bit extra, uh, we can lower the interest rate, right? So if we buy points, all right, or maybe we didn't lock it in, or maybe we want to see the risk if we don't lock it in, uh, what happens if the, the interest rate actually rises from here. Okay, so the nice thing about all of these financial functions that's a little different from Excel is that most of these inputs, right, so the term, the rate, all right, most of these things 
can be expressed as arrays. And so instead of having a single calculation and running the function several times to get the different values, we can pass in an array for any of these, any single term, right? So you would just vary one thing at a time to see its impact on the output. All right, so it just gives us a convenient way to see what happens uh, under a bunch of scenarios. All right, so I'm going to make a new variable here. I'll call it rates. All right, and uh, what I'm going to do is see what happens to the payment if the interest rate uh, rises or falls by a half a percent. And I'll do that in one eighth points interest. Okay, so just so you can see what I did there, looks like that. All right, so it goes from 5375 to 6375, right? And the input that we started with is right in the middle. Okay, so again, I'm going to have to convert them to the rate that I pay for each payment. Okay, so at the end here, what I'm going to do is divide it by 1200, make the same adjustment I did uh, up here. All right, and then I will set a new variable, payments, and I will set it equal to that MPF payment function and then pass in rates. All right, the term will be the same and then the negative loan amount. Okay, so there they are. All right, so there's our base case, right? And we can see if we get a half a percent lower, uh, it would save us over $100 a month. All right, and then obviously going in the other direction uh, costs us more than $100 a month. Now, if we want, we can set up a little table to print this out a little bit uh, more nicely formatted than this. Okay, so I could just sort of set up a little table here. Okay, so it starts off with a little heading, right? And then I'm just going to loop through print off the interest rate and then the corresponding payment. Okay, so there is our little table. So interest rate corresponding to uh, the monthly payment associated with it. Okay, we could also do something like see what happens if we borrow the money for a different amount of time. So, you know, generally mortgage loans are somewhere uh, between 15 and 30 years, although some of them can be longer. Uh, but they're generally 15 to 30 with increments of five years. So I'll set a new variable for terms. And I'll just make that a range object. And I'll step by, oops, five years. Okay, so 15, 20, 25, and 30 years we're going to be looking at. Okay, so I'll just use this PMT's variable again, MPF, call payment on it. All right, pass in our original rate. All right, pass in our terms, and they no longer need to be adjusted. And then the loan amount. And then we'll take a look. All right, so there they are. Okay, and then finally, uh, if we want to... Uh, do something similar where we generated a little table. Uh, we can just use a for loop and loop over each one of those payments and right output a nicely formatted table. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's how it looks. And yeah, I, obviously I did this ahead of time, so I know just about how many spaces I need to make my table look the way I want. All right, so you can play around with this. Okay, so there you have it, the payments at the various years formatted nicely as a table. All right, so I hope that helps you get started with the PMT function in NumPy Financial.